Got a new show for y'all. Got a damn good show. Yeah. Before it starts the show, tell them, Keith, how can they sport the twins? Man, Kevin, you tell them. No, man, you what, you shy? Hey, Chris, why we got to do that? <laughs> <laughs> you can always sport the twins. By buying you a patriotic T-shirt I had today. Maybe a white privilege card. Maybe a new race card. Or maybe some beard products. Or maybe a sign to warn the lefties before they come in your house. Yeah. Damn the discount code, Delta. Because that shit is spreading everywhere. <laughs> Get 20% off, Delta. We got a damn good show for y'all. Yeah, today. um... I, I, y'all seen what's going on in Afghanistan. Y'all always hear the stories how mm. the, the the U.S. military has trained over 300,000 soldiers. That's like, and I it, think that's what, 60% of the population of Wyoming? <laughs> right. And But for some reason, the Taliban, they, they, the soldiers just quit and the Taliban just took over. 300,000 losers. <laughs> Y'all seen Spartan 300, right? 300 people was able to kill all them people? Yeah. 300,000 couldn't defend that country. Right. So we got a guy firsthand. He was in the Army. Yeah. And he's got some time over there. I'm going to let him explain to you what's really going on. <laughs> <laughs> the cold hard facts. The, that is Brandon. How's it going, guys? Mr. Brandon Burns. What's he's a patron. On? Hey, what's let's give him on? a salute. I appreciate you, boys. Thank, Thank you very much. Hey, how's it going, guys? Uh, my name is Brandon Burns. Um, I'm former United States Army. I served with the 4th Infantry Division. Um, I was in the 1st uh, Battalion. I was also a weapons specialist and artillery forward observer. I did serve in Iraq in 2006 on OAF-3. I was also there during the Battle of Ramadi. Uh, my father was also an Army drill sergeant, did 25 years, multiple tours. Um, him and I actually even served in the same war zone. We were both in Iraq six months apart from each other. Oh, wow. Um, I was wounded when I was there. Uh, I, I was in the same vehicle when my lieutenant was was killed. Uh, he was hit by an IED. We lost over 11 guys in my battalion. Um, it was uh, it was a very bad time. If you know anything about the Iraq War, 2006 was uh, it was very rough for us. Right. Um, Afghanistan, of course, I was in Afghanistan, but I'm telling you guys right now, it, it's damn near the same. You know, yeah. we all served in the Middle East, and it was pointless. I'm mm -hmm. gonna tell you right now, me and a lot of guys, we feel exactly like the Vietnam vets. Like, we went over there and did something for nothing. Yeah. Yeah. We knew this was going to happen. You know, we pulled out of Iraq, and it went right back to hell. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know if everybody's seen this video. We saw the video of the Afghanis holding on to planes, trying mm -hmm. to escape the, the, the country, and they were right. falling and dying. And a lot of people were asking me, why did they do that? Why did they not know they were going to die? I have been there. Okay, I'm telling you, these people are not educated. They don't have internet. They don't have TV. They don't have access to information. They are basically like farmers and cavemen. And these Them people, cavemen, like huh? cavemen, cavemen like with cave camels, men, cavemen <laughs> with camels and AK-47s. And I'm telling you, these guys literally think it's like a flying train. They think right. if they hold on long enough, they'll be able to make it. You know, yeah. they literally had no clue that this was actually going to happen. To them. So it's not that, not so. It wasn't that they were so desperate. They was just well, they're desperate, oh, they're of course, desperate. but they're amazingly ignorant. Very ignorant. Yeah, and, and it's oh, well. it's sad to say, but it's a massive lack of education. No, yeah. when I was there, you know, we were in a lot of firefights. We were hit by multiple IEDs, and we were, we were also part of training the Iraqi army to be able mm -hmm. to take over their country. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, this was literally like training kids and farmers who were given AK-47s and basically right. saying, "Here, you're going to be in control of the country now." And it yeah. does not, and it did not work. It's like that whole culture is just stuck, like. 690 BC, 690 AD. It's like before, like before Christ? <laughs> Easy before Christ. AD. No, before Christ. Use your bowels. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, mean, that's a no win situation. It, it was so, absolutely bullshit. So that's what happened. They just. So you're telling me, like, when they were training them, they're like, man, this is just a waste of time. It's, it's a waste of time. Let me give you an example. I was there on a Humvee one day sitting on a 240 machine gun in one of their mm. bases, and we had three mortars land about 20 yards from me in the base, like three mortars, 60 millimeters, boom, boom, boom. Right. These guys are literally walking around with their shirts off and sandals and half uniform, and they're just they're eating their hummus, walking around like this is. No we're like, get down! And they're like, durka, durka, durka. It's like, <laughs> like, they are used to this. Like yeah. it's not even a big deal to them. They've been fighting like this for thousands of years. Right. You think that we're gonna change this in 20 years? Yeah, you're never gonna no, change this. That. Takes generational changes. Yeah. yeah so, I mean, I tell people, listen, most of the Arabic culture, they are peaceful people, right. but these small percentages that are violent they're speaking for your culture right and it is your guys's job to change them yeah that's it's kind of like twitter the uh 
that's just a liberal shithole. That's not the that's not the electorate right there. Right. That's being voiced on Twitter. Oh, right, that's right. ridiculous. But it's always the most ignorant people that's given the biggest platform to speak. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It's always been. A, that's a, a, that's what's going. That's what's wrong with the black community. Yeah, yeah. They're amazingly ignorant. The celebrities they get the platforms, and then everybody else is silence. Yeah. Remember for the bad. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my father always told me something that always stuck with me. Um, you know, kid, you can do all kinds of good things right in life. Mm-hmm. You're going to be remembered the most for the bad than the yeah. good. Right. And that that's exactly what's going on with these terrorist organizations. Mm. And it's sad. We're seeing women being burned alive and piles of bodies being stacked up now, right. just like it was a couple of years ago when the Taliban was in control. Right. It's going to get worse than before because now we have no presence there. And they right. got our weapons. And I I, I, It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I know when we go into countries, more often than not, we stay because we need to stabilize that region. I'm starting to think, I know Trump said he was going to pull out and Biden just follow his direction or whatever. But I'm starting to think, I mean— it wasn't an act of war zone. Nobody was dying. It was stabilized. Why in the hell? Why in the hell did we pull out? You know, I really can't speak for what he's doing. What he's doing. I mean, there's right. got to be some kind of bigger thing going on. Right. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I kind of would like to think that America is not the world's police. Right. You know, it's your country. It's your government. It's your right. job to I fix it. That. But at the same time, mm-hmm. we kind of are the right. world police. We kind of yeah. have and involuntarily became that position. And if we're right. going to be the world police, right. then you need to stick to it. Yeah. We don't leave innocent people behind, regardless yeah. if they don't share our views. Right. There is hope. There's always yeah. going to be hope. And right. I tell with the, the Arabic culture, look at Dubai. Mm-hmm. There's where I'm seeing styles of hope. You know, right. you can still have your religious beliefs, but we can start to adopt Western society, mm-hmm. you know, and come together. But unfortunately, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iraq, right. Syria, it, they are generations away from this. And yeah. I don't know what it's going to take. I mean, yeah. Yeah. maybe they need to be given information. Maybe they need to be given access to the internet. They need to see that the world is not what they are. Yeah, I think right. uh, Afghanistan is um, like, when you see like how big tech is controlling the narrative, mm-hmm. that's what's wrong with Afghanistan. Yeah. I mean, you got one party rule. There's, education is not a big thing. You got people jumping on planes thinking it's just going to take them wherever yeah. they need so to they go. They're only just, being taught one way of life, and they yeah. don't have really an option to choose yeah. what type of life they want to live. And I think that's why that should be highlighted about what big tech is doing in this country when you only get one point of view. That's why these people are so lost. That's why you're either a terrorist or a coward in that country. Absolutely. That's the reason. Wow, 300,000 people. 300,000. Just walk around in flip-flops and just... (laughs) Just like nothing. I mean, it's crazy the lack of technology that they have there. I really describe them as kind of like cavemen. I mean, right. these guys are walking around with their IDs, and some of these guys are 65 years old, and the ID is a picture of them when they were 12. That was the last time they've ever had a picture of them taken. I mean, I had an interpreter wow. when I was there, and one of the number one things he always wanted from me was to print the pictures of the stuff that I took because they just don't even have access to that. Mm-hmm. You know, I like to compare this to Korea. You know, Korea, we know massive dictatorship, but we're seeing a massive change in Korea when the people are starting to flip. And why Mm. is that? Because they're finally finding out the way the rest of the world is. They're getting cell phones. They're getting Mm. secret internet. They're getting secret computers. And they're learning. This is not the way the rest of the world is acting. That they have a choice. That they can change. And they need that, too. Yeah. Yeah. That's why that that area of the world is just so messed up is because they're being taught one thing and one thing only. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That culture is just... I mean, it's like you would never see, you would never go to that country and see people wearing Nikes and board shorts or tank tops or Nike t-shirts. Same, same get up. Day. It's ridiculous. It's yeah. the same <laughs> get up. Probably, do they even got just VHS tapes there or <laughs> fucking cassettes? The, the food is horrible. The, war, the water is horrible. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the inbreeding is crazy. Man, I'm, inbreeding. I'm, I'm, I'm Let's talk you. about the goats. <laughs> Don't even. I've seen some shit. I'm, mm. You see some goat I, <laughs> no comment. I, I've seen some stuff, man. I've even seen IED dude, stuffed in goats. Dude, share up. it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so I, I was also a gunner on the uh, M3A3 Bradley. Um, uh, actually, I joined the Army when I was 17 years old. I was, wow. I was halfway through high school. Mm-hmm. Um, I was in sophomore, and uh, I, I decided this is not for me. I'm going in the military, and my father and my mother signed me off. I actually ended up breaking a United States Army record by being the youngest and lowest-ranked person to ever be a master gunner on the Bradley system. I wow. beat the entire 1st Battalion of the 4th Infantry. It was crazy. But you know what I was doing when I was 17? <laughs> I know what it takes. <laughs> but anyway, so we have something called uh, FLIR vision. It's a camera that can see in heat vision, uh, either white hot and black hot. And I'm telling you, I'm on this mission one night, and we got. I'm looking right through the binos, and then white hot, I'm seeing this dude. I can't understand what he's doing because he's next to a donkey. <laughs> 
I shit you not. This mother effer, he puts a crate behind the donkey and he gets up on that and he goes to town at that thing. And I'm surprised why the donkey ain't kicking the shit out of him. And then I realize this donkey's probably used to this. Yeah. This probably happens all the damn time. Like it's disgusting, man. We we even a had donkey? A, a donkey, man. A donkey. Don't knock it till you try it, man. Man, you know what those things smell like? Yeah, it smells hey, like ants. Hey, freedom of choice. <laughs> to you. To you. <laughs> yeah, that's it's flies all over, and you gonna go up inside of that? <laughs> it's sad, man. It's so sad. It's disgusting. Yeah, um, yeah, I could, yeah, caveman. Let alone what they do with the little boys out there, man. Yeah. You know, mm. we did a lot of uh, Black Hawk insertions in which we capture people that we thought to be insurgents, and we'd tag them, bag them, and we'd take them to the prisons inside mm. Camp Taji. And, right. I mean, we lock all these people up in the same building, whether they're kids or adults, and right. we would hear boys screaming at night of how the, the guys are just raping them. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. It's 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 bad. Like, they use women for, like, slavery. They have multiple wives. This wife mm -hmm. does the cleaning. This wife does the cooking. And then they use the boys for pleasure. Right. Like, it's it's horrible it's horrible that is just and this is this is not like uh this is commonplace this is not like rare no that's you... common it's very well like if you've been in the service and been over there yeah you all you've all seen it we've all heard of it we have all heard the stories we know mm. this is true yeah 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 it's bad and these are the people like when we go in there yeah you're going to protect this country from afghanistan and mm -hmm. you can't I mean, even protect those people from themselves no you can't even protect them from themselves yeah. They have to want to help themselves. So, like, that Biden, is a third for third world country. So, when Biden said he didn't see this stuff coming, that's all bullshit. God, like, when, of course that's bullshit. How yeah. did you not see this coming? <laughs> we just did it in Iraq. Yeah. We just pulled right. out of Iraq, and they went yeah. right back to hell. Right. How did you not know that was going to happen in Afghanistan? Yeah. Yeah. You're just lying to the people, Biden. You know that's the truth. Yeah. And the thing that it pisses me off, man, is like that his constituents, mainstream media, oh, look, he owned it. He, he said it. I mean, did not even criticize. I seen MSNBC him. was praised him. Said he evacuated like fifty thousand people out of this country over the last week. They was like, they was they was congratulated. Said he was doing a great job. The media, mm. horrible. I mean, let me let me tell you something. You want to look at a measure of a man? Look at his son. <laughs> Yeah, you want to talk about yeah. that? Okay, you guys know what I'm talking about. Maybe right. the story, but it, it's it's ridiculous, guys. I mean, yeah. us veterans, we feel like we were, we're stabbed in the back. Yeah, yeah, because a lot of friends. people lost their life, and now you just pull out. It's like all that, that all what was was for nothing. For nothing. I mean, I was in the Bradley when my lieutenant was killed, and the explosion was so big, it flipped a 33-ton tank Bradley upside down, and it crushed him in half. Mm. And we saw that, and yeah. we saw it with a lot of them right. for nothing. It was all for nothing, for nothing. A loss of life for nothing. It, honestly, like in my opinion, other than maybe this, the Korean War, the World War II was the last real true war for human life. Right. Everything else has been for political BS. Yeah, you know, right. We fought World against War. true tyranny in World War One and World War II and the Revolutionary War. Every mm. war after that has basically been a joke. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's horrible. Yeah. It's, it's horrible. our government, our politicians, man, it's just they, these are the people we're electing and they don't have our best interests when it comes to heart. God, we need to have term limits on senators. Yeah. I think that's one of the biggest problems we have right yeah. now. Yeah, I've been yeah, heard. we got some people that's been in office like decades. Yeah, and they've lived a millionaire lifestyles, mm -hmm. and they have security, and, and, and their they cities are run houses. down. And they don't know what you and me are living like. They don't yeah, know what right. people out there are living like. They don't right. work the nine to five minimum yeah. wage job. Yeah. Right. How are you gonna act like you know what's best for us? You right. don't. You don't live like us. You're the one percent. The 99% yeah. is what you need to be thinking about. Yeah, politicians yeah. too busy telling people what they want to hear than telling them what they need to hear. Absolutely. Right. That's, that's, that's politicians in a nutshell. I know when our founding fathers wrote the Constitution, Bill of Rights and all that, I know they didn't foresee anything like this. Our country would look like this. Yes. The power that our politicians have over our daily lives, it was never intended to be like this. No. Yeah. The laws of man are flawed. Right. I mean, of all the countries in this world... The yeah, power of, corrupts people. Oh, absolutely. Easily. I and mean, if you look at the Bill of Rights, the Bill of Rights are the closest laws that I've seen in this world that are the closest to the laws of life. Right. And if we go back just even a couple hundred years or even a couple decades, it used to be law. You had to burn a woman because she believed in science. You know, it had right. to be a law to do the stuff that we would think is absolutely unthinkable now. We still have a lot of laws in place that need to be changed. Mm -hmm. We need to focus on the laws of life. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Our um, schools need to be revamped. Half the things that we go to school for, we don't even need. Oh, it's ridiculous. Should be teaching a trade. I mean, it's all kinds of things you can just learn in school. Life. Just life. Just, yeah, yeah. 
The teachers yeah. right now are actually being very political. I mean, mm -hmm. Shadow Ridge High School here in Las Vegas, the principal, this happened yesterday. She mm -hmm. was going around telling all the students, you will not wear American flag stuff. You will not wear red, white, and blue. You will not wear Republican agenda stuff. And it caused a protest where several students last night actually showed up with trucks with American flags, hats, patriotic mm -hmm. stuff. And they're at school right now. My daughter's in the same school. Mm -hmm. Channel 8 News is over there right now doing a report on what just happened. Just for wearing a flag? Just for wearing a flag. She I walked up to it. a couple of people saying, yeah. you will not wear American flag stuff. Stuff, Republican uh, stuff or Trump stuff. This, so this is uh, just a teacher. Uh, this is the principal. This is the principal of yeah. the school. And the principals in Las Vegas, Nevada, are strictly in charge of the policies to include mass mandates and the mm. vaccines. They're forcing their own political agenda. And that's not their place. Yeah. You guys need to teach the curriculum. You keep your political uh, yeah. opinions to yourself. That's not too much to ask for, you know? Yeah. You know, when I was a kid, I was in a class, and one of the teachers, this was during, like, one of the times when Bush was being voted in, mm -hmm. and I was trying to ask him, like, you know, just curious, like, who did you vote for? Who did you vote for? This teacher was die hard about never letting me know his political side and never letting me know his opinion. Mm -hmm. That's how it needs to be. Yeah. Keep your opinions to yourself, teach yeah. the curriculum, and let the kids make their own choice. Yeah, the yeah. politics shouldn't even be, it, it should be nowhere near our schools. The kids, they should just let them be kids. Just teach them science, social studies. Yeah, you know, just geography. social studies, how government works. It doesn't have to yeah. get political. It doesn't have to be You don't political. have to teach them what, conservative or liberal, any, any of that. We're group. all Americans. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to touch on, on how they treat uh, women in the Middle East. Oh, I mean, I've seen, like, some of uh, the current administration telling, no, it's like they're talking to the Taliban. No, they're going to change all that. Mm -hmm. They're going to treat women. They're going to be representative in their government, their new government. And, I mean, what do you say to that? What That's did you say? That's an absolute see? lie. They're mm -hmm. just telling the news what they want to hear. Right. If the news believes it, they're absolutely lying. I mean, I saw that video how we're going to treat the women equally. A video yesterday in Afghanistan mm -hmm. of a woman being burned alive because she's going against what they believe. Mm -hmm. You know, I was there. They have to cover up their face. They have to cover up all pieces of their skin. Mm -hmm. They're beaten. They're hit. They're stoned to death. And a, a very few times were they ever able to take their um, burqas off. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when I'd see their face, almost every woman has scars and cuts on their face from being right. beaten their whole life or burned. You know what, Brandon? I, I don't know much about the Muslim faith, but I asked some Muslims, and I said, what's with the uh, the uh, women's attire? You can't even see it. Sometimes you can just barely, barely see the eyes. eyes yeah. and, he, and he said to me, he said, that's to keep the men from straying away from their wife. I said, what do you mean? He says, well, when you see a woman's body, a lot of men are tempted to cheat on their wives. I said, but that's not the woman's fault. <laughs> it's the, the man's fault, fault, right? So why... Do, do you think that's right? He said, as, as rooted in our religion, that's what we believe in. That, that's BS. To say yeah. that I'm, I see a woman and I'm going to stray, right. you're your own body. You're your own human. You make your right. own choices. That tells you right there, that society, if a woman's raped, it was her fault. Yeah. yeah. That's that's. So that's like wrong. a woman walking down with her half her boobs hanging out and big butt. And oh, she, she gets. She, she wanted was asking it. for it. Yeah, she's asking yeah, for no, it. No, that it, it's so wrong, and we all yeah. know it's can wrong. Can you can you recall anything like where you actually seen while you was in Iraq, like how women are treated? So yeah, uh, I actually just yeah. like little nuances yeah, no, no. people may not realize. This was crazy. So you know, not all of them are violent. You know, some of them actually mm. really were for us when we were there. And I had a, a woman come out once. Um, this was a guy who actually um, was one of the town leaders. He had about seven wives, and. And one of the ladies come out and they gave me a shot of chai tea. And it was very common for them to give us little shot glasses of chai tea with like half sugar mix. It was like yeah. a, a ceremonial thing. Right. And she runs up to me and she offers me uh, a drink. And the husband saw her give me a drink. He comes back, he grabs her by the hair and pulls her inside and starts beating her and, and puts her in the building. And I never saw that woman again. And I went to the same town many, many different times after that. Wow. I don't know what happened, but I never <coughs> saw her again. That is crazy. It was crazy. So it's like just like jealousy, huh? It, 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 I, I don't even know. It's just their culture. They just... It's, it's like women, women or, or They're not... They're slaves. They're slaves. I'm going to say it like it is. They are yeah. slaves. They are second-class citizens. They're not even seen as humans. They're there to be used. Servants. Yeah. Servants. I mean, exactly. just by looking... I mean, I don't like to put down other people's beliefs, but I was like... That, that region of the world has its problems for a reason. It's that culture is what they believe in. It's like... I mean, I understand you have a religion, but same thing with Christians. Sometimes they, you know, they just become radical. It's just that faith and that that whole way of life is just just wrong. It is, and and you know, we're not affecting anything. You know, I, I yeah. talked to a lot of guys who worked out at Creature Air Force Base, No Air Force Base, and they're on the Predators, they're on the drones, and they're talking to me about some of the stuff that's happening there. And I'm like, think about it like this. You know, I see a terrorist who's on the hit list, and we're going to drop a missile on him. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we drop that missile. 25 yards away from a bunch of kids, all right? It doesn't kill the kids, but what did the kids see? 
Mm. They saw the American people drop a bomb on three guys and blow them up into pieces and their bodies go all over the place. What is that doing to those kids psychologically? You think that's bringing them together under a common cause? You just created five more extremists by blowing up three. Right. Yeah. You know, one of the most horrible things that I ever saw there, I was uh, I was in a town called Horobash, Iraq. It was right outside Camp Taji. Horrible, man. Was that close to Bakalaka? <laughs> yeah, man, very close. <laughs> if you take a left, about three cross down. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this day, um, I see this guy coming around the corner, and he was a suicide bomber. And he mm -hmm. decides he's going to run right at me and try to blow himself up. Well, thank God for me, he messed up. He blew himself up. Now, I'd seen this guy before, and he had a kid. Mm -hmm. And he didn't get close to me, but he blew himself up, and he's all over the floor in pieces and bloods. And I see this kid run around the corner not knowing what just happened. It was his son. This kid ran and slipped and fell in all of his father's entrails and blood and parts. And he got up, stood up, covered in blood, and he realized who it was. He realized he just fell in his dad's body parts. He took off running away screaming and crying. Mm -hmm. it, one of the craziest things I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, why would you do that to your son? That's like It never happened in my unit, but these parents would give their kids grenades and say go give it to the american mm -hmm. they would sacrifice their own kids and blow their own children up they wow. would stuff bombs inside goats and horses on the floor and wait for you to drive by a goat and it would blow up trash bags we're not fighting a war we're not fighting soldiers in uniform mm -hmm. we're fighting boxes and trash bags and mm -hmm. bombs buried under roads yeah. and snipers you know yeah, I'll, i always wonder it's like when y'all out there you how do you determine who's the good guys and who's because they all look alike? You don't. There's no way to determine. We've had people who were on our side who turned on us. Another unit I was in, they had a, an interpreter turn on them and try to blow them up. And he worked with us for months as an interpreter. And then he switches and tries to blow you up. Wow. It sucks because you just don't know. I mean, all you're doing is you're watching body language. That's all you're doing. Mm -hmm. You're trying to see, are they staring at you? What are they doing with their hands? Are they holding a cell phone? Um, you're just looking for gay you're, you're eyes. Looking, yeah, basically. Basically, you're trying to understand them psychologically of thinking, is this person acting normally or are they acting like an enemy and they might try to do something? So when you was out there, you see all this. I, I know it had to run through your mind. Why the hell are we even out here? These people are just lost. In, you know, a, in a time machine. I, I can't say for sure why we've done what we've done of trying to be in the world. I'm thinking it's to de destabilize that area and keep the whole yeah, globe a lot well, safer. Let's be a, lot. a lot of people think oil, right? Right. We're there for money. You know, America, we got a lot of freedoms and everything, but let's be honest. America yeah. sometimes are bullies, and it's because of the people who are running the country. They're mm. bullying other countries with our military, the greatest military in the world. Mm. You know, it is what it is, but it's just insane. I mean, I can't even express, like— we did nothing. Yeah. We yeah. did nothing when we were there. And I was 20 years in lost, lost Afghanistan in what, maybe, what, 12 hours? Easy. And, and all these soldiers out there, Marines, airmen, you guys all know this to be true. We weren't there fighting for our country. We weren't mm. there fighting for freedom. Mm. We were fighting for each other. It was, it was the guy next to me. Let's mm. fight for you. You fight for me. Let's get home. That's what yeah. we were fighting for. Yeah. You know? That's just a sad, bitter truth of it. <clears throat> it is. It is. <clears throat> Maybe one day there'll be another major war. Who knows? Yeah, New yeah, yeah. World order. That's the next direction. Man, if there's a ne another major war, there's that's gonna be some nukes. <laughs> well, you know, Einstein says, "I don't know what World War Three will be fought with, <coughs> yeah. but World War Four will be fought with sticks and stones." Oh, yeah. I get you know, it. I get before. it. The third one just blew each other out. <laughs> blew each other. <laughs> now we all duck a duck a bock a lock a lock a. I'm going to hit you in here with this damn Hope brick. you got your food storage. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Sure, destruction for sure. And I mean, I think like like people have lost their lives in that area, like their families. And they got to be like, man, I lost my loved one over absolutely nothing. Yeah. I mean, I, I still think they're all heroes and they died for something that right. they believed in. Of course. Yeah. But they died for a cause. Just looking back on it now, and, and you can see what's going on. And yeah, my lieutenant had two kids, um, and he was two weeks away from going home before he was killed. Yeah, knowing all these stories and all the sacrifice people made, um, uh, and looking at how we was we pulled out, I don't think we should have never left. If 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 the major reason why we was out there was to keep the whole entire globe a lot safer, why the hell did we leave? Because it was stabilized. It was people wasn't dying. Even the Afghan people were better off if when we were there. Yeah, just absolutely. to pull out and see all these kids and these women dying. Yeah, it's just, you're screwed if you do. I mean, you're over there fighting somebody else's battle. Yeah. Or, I mean, it's just like it's like a no-win situation. It, yeah. We should have treated it like Korea then. Yeah. We should have just had a permanent base never should have left. Mm -hmm. Maintain yeah. that, that presence. Yeah. Cause you can give them a school and start teaching their kids different, but 
I don't know, man. Use the schools against us. Yeah. You know, we uh, one of the things we had to do was we had to provide security for schools and give uh-huh. medical aid. You know, so mm. I showed up to a school one day, um, and again, I'm, I was always a gunner and weapon, so I was on top of the Humvee, that machine gun, and mm. snipers were waiting for us because they knew we were coming to the school. I had two snipers on the roof, me on the 40, and another guy on the uh, the 50. And man, it's such a bad day. IED blows up, hits the medic vehicle, sends her flying. Mm. My freaking there's there's rounds going right over my head because they're trying to hit me and the other guy. Mm-hmm. My gun failed. It didn't actually work. Four light primer strikes in a row. So I just brought mm-hmm. out my AR and I saw the guy shot him once in the hand. His hand was all dangling. Mm-hmm. I told the other Humvee to go get him. They grab him out of the building and we have the interpreter ask him what happened to his hand. He's like, oh, I cut it on a fence. His hands all half gone. <laughs> like, <laughs> tell him, I know he didn't get caught on a fence. I just shot him. Right. <laughs> Ridiculous. Ridiculous, man. They're not I mean, even good liars, huh? They're not even good liars. <laughs> yeah, like, okay, so they have schools. I'm like, who's teaching the schools? Is, is it like kind of like the blind leading the blind? Out kind of. So they they'll have like a couple of teachers, but we're talking mm. one teacher teaching 80 to 100 kids at a time. Mm. How are you going to get information across? Yeah. yeah. You can't. And then half of them don't show up. Mm. Um, think about the the kids and families who their dad just died in an explosion or an attack. Or yeah, how do you go to school after that? They don't. Yeah. I mean, what do these women do when they no longer have a husband? And then they really become second-class citizens because now there's no husband to kind of right. essentially watch them or protect them, even though they're slaves as it is. Now right. imagine this woman freely out there. It's like free meat for somebody to just mess with and grab. And, you know, and people point these things out on social media, and then you have these— uh, these lefties, these liberals saying, stop talking down to them. I'm like, that's just the truth. Yeah. That culture is just wrong. And the sad thing about it is most people are never really going to truly understand it until they've gone to that country or they've right. witnessed it. Yeah. You know, everybody in America, all they're concerned about with is their their, their television shows or what they tell food them. they're going to eat that yeah. night. Mm-hmm. And then they believe what they see on TV. Well, yeah. I see this person on the TV all the time. He's famous. Whatever he's saying is must be true. Right. It's not, guys. Yeah, I canceled I, cable television before I went to Iraq in 2005, and I've never watched TV since, and my life has been better for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not I can think for myself. Right, right. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that the, the TV, the media, they're not there to, like, inform you. Yeah. They're there to push their narrative, their propaganda. Of course. Like, yeah. They don't get it. They, they don't tell it. you to think. They tell you how to think. Come on, guys. You guys know these mm-hmm. news organizations are owned by billionaires. Mm-hmm. They're being funded. Right. Of course, they're going to listen to the guy paying their check. Yeah. This right. is what I believe. Make sure you tell them this. Don't tell them otherwise. Right, right, right. Otherwise, you're going to get fired and lose your job. Yeah, it's like everybody don't want to think for themselves anymore. They'd rather have someone tell them what to no, do. No, the sad thing is they think they're thinking. <laughs> they ain't. They think they think it. They're, they're right. just sheep. They, they, they think they're thinking. <laughs> you guys really have access to all right. the information in the world at your fingertips if you will truly look at the information and search for it. Yeah, and I tell people, don't believe everything you see on Fox. Don't believe everything. Hey, you better not believe anything you see on CNN, MSNBC. Oh, no. I mean, and you should get— uh, Whatever you see, you should get a double, uh, you know, another response, another opinion. You should never look at the TV and just depend on that one person to tell you what's going on because they all have an agenda, a yeah. narrative they have to yeah, buy like, by. Like mm-hmm. they keep saying on the right, we're all sheep and we're in a cult. Look at it this way. We're like, in a cult. Yeah, we're in a cult. But look, Trump's administration came up with a vaccine. Yeah. And I don't want to take the vaccine. Suppose I'm not sheep. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. not. I'm not a member of a cult. If I was, I would take the vaccine. I don't care if Trump autographed the damn vial and needle that yeah. goes in me. I'm still not taking it. Look, and he yeah. got it right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What would have happened if Trump would have been in office and he would have mandated the vaccine to everybody? Oh man, he's the damn dictator. Right. Who, <laughs> right. How would people be thinking now? Yeah. Well, Biden does it. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Just come on, guys. You know that's true. Think yeah. about it. Even if you are a Democrat and you yeah. saw Trump say ma- mandatory max yeah. mandatory vaccines, when what it would com- you have thought? Well, right. when before the vaccine came out, Kamala, everybody's like, I ain't taking that vaccine. No, I ain't I'm not it. taking it. <clears throat> but then Biden's in office. Oh yeah. Let's Oh, yeah. Because they was oh, going to okay. politicize it, use it against Uncle everybody. Joe. Yeah. 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 You know what's crazy, man? I'm getting pissed. <laughs> I've been pissed. Yeah. Preach. <laughs> So I, I gotta ask you guys, like, like what's yeah, yeah. up with the Taliban look right now? I mean, you guys can mix right in. I'll tell you, I like you guys it, man. there to affect change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to look at, like black, black people say I hate being black and I'm trying to look white, but now I just look like the Taliban. <laughs> yeah. Just put just put on a little hat, you be all right. You blend right in. All I know. need is a turban, baka laka laka, durka durka, durka durka durka. Where's the goat? <laughs> 
<laughs> take a little trip out to Afghanistan. Yeah. You no know, white privilege cards. <laughs> yeah. I mean, damn. Yeah. Get back to what we were saying, if Trump would have came out and start mandating all this, I'm like, man, you crazy as hell. Crazy as hell. I voted for you, but I'm not going to. Mm. I mean, it just. I would have been against him too. Trump right actually kind of, I think he mentioned he got vaccinated. Yeah, that, he did. That pissed some people off. I did. Yeah. Because I'm like, you already had it. <laughs> what you think? Yeah. Right. But it's his choice. It's, it's kind of like choice, if right? I get. Yeah, it's his choice. Freedom of your yeah, own yeah, choice. Yeah. yeah. Make so I left it at that because I'm not anti-vaccine. I'm all about you taking the vaccine. You yeah. do what you want. Yeah. I'm not anti-mask. I don't want to worry. I know if I'm breathing air, I'm breathing a virus. Yeah, right. You know, but right. if you if you breathe in air and you can breathe air freely, it's not protecting you. Of course. You look at these people uh, working with these uh, extremely deadly diseases. They have on suits that supply its own oxygen. It's yeah. not even being filtered from the outside. Those people look like they're going to the moon. Oh, yeah. Man, that's ridiculous. But we walk around with that and our eyes wide open. You walk around with a little blanket on your face. Half thinking, your nose hanging out. Yeah. Not even wearing it properly. Doing anyway. this shit. Oh, uh, doing I'm all saying, this. <laughs> we used to have people come to Spartan Arms Gun Shop and they're, they're yeah. wearing gloves and they're wearing masks and they're wearing shields. And I watched the same guy right. grab the door and open it, grab his cell phone, Grab a bunch of right. guns, then touch and wipe his face. Right. And yeah. then touch. Do you even understand anything about pathogens and how to actually <laughs> right. stop it? Everybody think you breathe in, you pick it up with your fingers, you rub your eyes. You breathe in it in. More it often than not, you're going to pick it up with your hands because you touch everything. Oh, it's ridiculous. And you, you scratch your eye, all of a sudden you got COVID in your eye. At first, when COVID no, came out. Pink eye, pink eye. Yeah, at pink first, eye. Yeah, at <laughs> first, when COVID came out, I was washing my hands and everything. Oh, yeah. Man, that I, shit got, I got old. tired of. I, t I got tired of, man, I just want to die. <laughs> Because you don't Going realize it until you like touch crazy. stuff. You're like, okay, yeah. you gotta wash your hands. I touch this. I gotta wash my hands. After a while, it's like, man, yeah, I just I'm the not mask doing it. is very is if it's doing anything, it's doing very little because your eyes is wide open. It says right on the N95 mask mm -hmm. that it will not stop it. It says it right on the box <laughs> that right. it will not stop it. Yeah, that's why when I hear about the mask mandates, I'm thinking it's more of a control thing. It's I think it's more of a training. Thing that mm -hmm. hey, trust your government. Groom if me. I can get you, yeah, they groom you. They groom you. They groom you like uh, pedophiles groom kids. Yeah, that's what it is. Or like gay people when they try to uh, groom uh, straight people. Man, why would you have to take it down? <laughs> it's true, man, but you can't say it. Yeah, it's true, man. <laughs> I worked in retail, man. All these gay people, man. Always, uh, hey, man. I know you. Um, I know you straight, man. But uh, I'm telling you, man, you just best blowjob uh, comes from another man. I was like, really? Why is that? He said because. I got a mushroom tip. <laughs> <laughs> I said, that's a damn good argument, but you still ain't sucking me off. <laughs> now, you're just jealous the gay guys want to sleep with them, and that's all. They just think he's more attractive. <laughs> I mean, what's that meme going around? Like, if I can smell a fart through the mask, it ain't right. working. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. speaking of gays, how are gays treated now? <laughs> uh, we kind of forgot about them, didn't we? Yeah, I'm we, got, you, we, we all talked about, about women. I know what I could just real secret. If you're gay out there, you got to be secret because they will. Yeah. I'm actually uh, seeing a lot more gay people that be out in the open, and I'm friends with a lot of gay people. And honestly, mm -hmm. they are some of the nicest and best people I've ever met in my life because yeah. they've already been discriminated on. They already know the right. separation, yeah. and now mm -hmm. they see somebody who's willing to accept their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Honestly, I got a lot of gay friends. I'm comfortable with who I am. I'm straight. I have two daughters, but I always mm -hmm. mess with them. Yeah, you got to put like, that disclaimer out there. I, 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 I'm, <laughs> straight. I'm straight, guys, but uh, I, I mess with them all the time. Like, hey, I, right. if I was gay, I'd go gay for you. You're my type. Good <laughs> 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 like, play. Good play. Yeah. What do they say? Don't knock. I can tell you try. Yeah. Like, oh, whoa. Uh, I yeah, still ain't I'm trying it. <laughs> that, that butthole is not made for that. <laughs> yeah, it's on a section. woman. Oh, there you go. Hey, man, while we go in here, let's get off. Well, you took it down. I just, I just, uh, hey. He started. He just finished. You know, I've noticed a lot of gay Keith don't like buttholes. <laughs> well, I mean, that's personal choice. Freedom yeah, it's choice. all about choice. Freedom of choice. No, man, you need to do it. I hate to you try it. It's crazy. Hey, uh, so, um, we talked about women out there, and we talked about that culture. Yeah. And, like, if you're a homosexual, I know that's got to be a death warrant out there. Oh, yeah. It's bad. Yeah. It's bad. Which is crazy because a lot of them actually are. Like, a lot of guys actually sleep with the guys. Right. But they can't be open about it. But they are, which is mm -hmm. weird because, like, they do it, but then when their religion finds out, mm -hmm. the higher-ups, like, try to kill them. That wow. is just ridiculous. So like the pastors come out. Well, you did what? <laughs> Basically, it's like you got caught. All right, yeah. we gotta kill you. Like, even though that dude's probably sleeping with dudes too, but he didn't get right. caught, so they don't gotta kill him. This is crazy. <laughs> so, uh, just contradicting everything that you guys say you are. Hypocrites. Bunch of Democrats over Hypocrites. there. <laughs> Bunch of them. Bunch of them. Cavemen. Y'all need some conservatives over there. <laughs> they need some help. They need help. Man. Durker, durker, durker. <laughs> Conservatism.
That's what you need. Just send them more donkeys and goats. Maybe they'll chill out. I don't know. Yeah, man. What do you do with that that area of the world? I it's mean, done. it's done. It's, it's uh, done. Just like, don't. Here's my opinion. If you want to fix this area of the world, stop sending in these little half assies units, one or twos at a time. Mm. Just fucking send as many people as we can there at once and fix as much as we can at once and mm. stop as much as, it, as we can at once. Just yeah. the, the maximum amount of units that we can send, get them mm. over there. Make mm. a campaign, go hard, go strong, get what we can done, and then leave a presence there after that. If yeah, that's, that's what happens in a society. If you have a la lack of options, you have no independent uh, thought, I mean, you're doomed to live like what's going on in Afghanistan. Or maybe for once we just stop worrying about the rest yeah. of the world and we work, worry about the problems that we have in this country yeah. right now. We focus Man, on that ain't, that ain't that the truth. Yeah. I mean, what do they say? You can't love others if you don't love yourself. You can't take care of others if you don't take mm -hmm. care of yourself. Then let's take care of our damn country first and what we need and what we got going on. Stop worrying about the rest of the world. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. You know, let them do that. Let them do their own thing. Let and them do when you come here messing with us, just blow them up. There you go. <laughs> blow them up like Salamani. Try to get close. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks, Brandon. Thanks for the insight, <laughs> man, on what happened it. in Afghanistan. Yeah, and yeah. So just, I mean, you could just confirm everything. I mean, Biden's administration, I mean. Horrible. That's just, not a leader. Just lies. That's not leader. That's not a leader. Still. Yeah. But the left supports him. If you, there's 81 million people. Well, they say. No, it was 81 million people voted for that. That's what I'm saying. They say 81 million people. I mean, y'all got to feel kind of stupid right now. Right? No, they don't. They think he's doing a great job. Yeah. I've seen quite a few Biden supporters even coming out and be like, bro, yeah. I think we made a mistake. Yeah. You think you crazy? Said you did make hey, a mistake. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you should have said to him. You're crazy. You, you, you think you made a mistake. Hindsight's a bitch, ain't it? <laughs> Hindsight's a bitch. Like somebody said to me, there's like, maybe Trump was supposed to lose. Like yeah. maybe he needed to lose so they could see how bad they were going to fuck it up. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah, so sometimes you got to take a couple steps back. Every cloud take. has a silver line. Hey, man, I was finna say something. I like that, though. Every cloud has a silver line. I was going to say, Sometimes you got to take two steps back Fuck off. <laughs> before you can take two steps forward. It doesn't go like that. Yeah, it do. Sometimes you got to take two steps back and take one step forward. No. It's some shit what like that. What is it, Brent? I, I sound like George Bush in here. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to come up with the cliches. I'll you tell you right now. I'll tell you right now. We take two steps back and we take a whole ass leap forward. That's what yeah. we're going to do. Yeah. yeah. Whole ass leap. There yeah. you go. Make there you go. Ass. Spoken like a real patriot. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mike Lindell, true patriot. He needs our help. Here's a man who started from nothing. Built a great company, great products. I mean, you can buy pillows, towels. You can even buy some stuff for your pets, for your dog. I'm buying some stuff for my dog, Milo, and Ruby. We support people that have a great product and supports our country. Yeah. And they support freedom of speech. Yeah, I don't I don't support companies that's... Yeah. Just that don't support this country. Yeah, I don't support companies that don't value other people's opinions. And the left is trying to destroy this man because he has a different opinion. Yeah, just because he supported the yeah. president of yeah. the United States. So go to his website now. Yeah, right. Use discount code Hogs Twins. Yeah, get a huge discount and you'll be supporting a patriot. Yeah. Don't forget, go to officialhorsetwins.com. Go to the Fight Censorship tab, hit the links, follow us on Telegram, follow us on Rumble, and follow us on YouTube. They haven't censored us there yet. Yeah, they're actually being fair. Yeah. Go to officialhorsetwins.com and pick you out a patriotic t-shirt today. Hell, I'm even giving you 20% off. Just type in discount code Chinese virus. We call it Chinese because it's from China. We making t-shirts great again. Yeah.